as everything keeps going into AI now, like I think human made, human created is actually going to be something very powerful. I think as humans, that's like when you figure out a way to express yourself is a way to like, you know, like release. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're just wound up and trying to play pro and you're like stuck in your head and it's going to be tough for you to take pressure off of that uniting and bringing things together is powerful yeah division is the least powerful thing it'll make you so weak yes. and honestly i learned that from soccer it doesn't matter what you're trying to do if you bring people together you're going to succeed Welcome, welcome. You are now tuned in to the EPB podcast. It's your boy, Matt Marshall, as usual. EPB podcast dedicated to exploring culture and soccer around the world and especially in the United States to grow the game here. I got a special guest with us today, my boy Javi Soto of the Immortals Project. He's going to tell us a little bit about that. Bro, welcome. I appreciate you coming. Thank you, bro. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. I love the setup. I love the, the inspiration behind this whole thing. And Thank you for having me. My man. dog, yeah. yes, sir. So okay. first, I, I let me just tell you my understanding of, I guess, you and like how I've come aware of Immortals, yeah. not only on social media, because you guys are pretty much everywhere in social media. If, it's, <laughs> if I'm not seeing your stuff, I'm seeing people sharing stuff yeah, yeah. or a part of it. Um, like I've played soccer in different parts all around LA and there's somebody with like a shirt, like a dope <laughs> sweatshirt, and I'm like, yo, what is that? IFC, something like that. What What is the Immortals Project? Like what, and, and is it the Immortals Football Club, Immortals yeah, Project, what, yeah. what is it all? All right, so we'll start at the top. So um, pandemic happens, mm. we're all sitting here thinking we're at home. Right around that same time, Web3 happens. NFTs, crypto, mm. new technology, you know, it's uh, new tools. Yeah. Um, my whole life, like my background comes from being a director, uh, producer, creative. Yeah. Um, originally played soccer growing up, but um, you know, my passion took me into that field. And I'm sitting there, pandemic starts, everything slows down. Um, and I have my really great friend, Will Nichols. He takes photography of palm trees, like beautiful sunset. It's so simple, but it's gorgeous, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he puts them up for sale on OpenSea. He, he mints it. He's also a quick adapter. He's always looking for, um, and uh, ends up changing his life, makes life-changing money off of it. Wow. Um, and he's on my ear. He's telling me, he's like, hey, Javi, like, come on, man. Like, not like at that moment, I'm just making art for musicians and stuff like that. So he's like, Javi, you got to figure out this stuff. Like, you have probably back catalog that you could just put out, whatever it is, like, figure it out. Fast forward a couple months, I still haven't quite figured it out. I like I like to figure out there's got to be something to it. Like I don't want to just put out like a photo I took. Like right. What's why? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And we link up again a couple months later, and and the way he puts it to me, he's like, you know, this is just a new form of publishing. So think of it like when YouTube first came out, like people would just would just put it onto YouTube, just and then that there. could you know lead you to getting eyes, whatever attention. Now there's a way where it could be connected to you and your digital wallet and actually create a livelihood for you. Yeah. So he's like, what do you want your what do you want your legacy to be in this new form of publishing? And for some reason when he said that, it, it clicked and it shot me back to starting to think, well, okay, well like what would I want to leave behind? Yeah. Right? Like when he said legacy, that's what I thought. Yeah. And um, the first thought that I had was like NFT projects, they were very community based. I was trying to build something, whether it was like art, like it gave back to artists so they could do their own pro. I was trying to figure out something where it would pay it forward. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I'm sitting there and somehow it just clicks in my head. I'm watching the Champions League and I'm, and I realize I'm like, wow, each player not only has an insane fan base from their country, but then these guys go to all the biggest places in around Europe and, and around the world and yeah. create these insane fandoms of, of just people that support them. And I'm thinking there, I'm like, wow, okay, so maybe our characters will be based off like the most, like the Pelés, the Maradonas, like like I didn't even, like I to this day, I haven't made one of a player that's still playing. Like I wanted it to pay dues to the guys that like- Paved the way, Paved right? the way yeah, because like, yeah. 
it's like a modern thing, but like let's give the, those guys the flowers, right? Yeah. So so we made a uh, hundred characters, original characters, and everything at that time too was like very much like computer generated. Like people would put traits and then like random, and they would sell them, right? Yeah. I was like, nah, we're gonna like hand draw like what these. We're only putting out a hundred first of all. Like people are doing ten thousand pieces and stuff. I'm like, we're putting out a hundred. These are gonna mean something, and we're gonna do them like human made yeah and as we go as everything keeps going into ai now like i think human made human created is actually going to be something very powerful it's like it's precious like, material it's, it's like, like the antique. human spirit created this yeah. like it's not like um, i didn't i didn't prompt a machine and it made it it's like actually this is from life you know yeah this this came out of someone right yeah so i was able to connect with my boy marcel who's an incredible artist he's from the east coast mm. and he rocked with it he loved the project he's like i'll do this but only if we really figure out a way to give back yeah he's like this can't be like just money making correct or, this yeah. can't be that nft shit that other people were doing yeah so fast forward i'm able to bring on two two so i had marcel then i had Beta. And I had my boy Gunner. Beta's background, he grew up in Barcelona, grew up in the Barcelona system, then played pro at Barcelona. So he came from that side of like soccer, like the, the actual, actual sport, side, right? Yeah. And then my boy Gunner, he came from a marketing background. And, and what he did is he, you know, he worked for Interscope for a bunch of people and he, he would help people with their messaging and how do you get a message out. And what we did is like, we released those 100 characters and we were able to actually get a lot of people that like peers, like other creatives, other like not even most of most of the people that supported the project didn't even play soccer, you know. Yeah. So it's like so it's like we were able to kind of uh, use our uh, and, and through Beta we were able to get like Sergi Roberto, Jonathan Bond, like some pro players, right? Yeah. That's what allowed us to like start as a project. Grow as a project. Yeah. So that, that was the base. So yeah. we sold out in the first week, hundred characters. We created a, a film with two kids, right? And my boy Udi, he's like, yo, I got the perfect kids. And he's and I'm like, yo, how old are they? He's like, oh, they're 11. And in my mind, I'm like, ah, dude, I don't know. Like, I think we need like 15 year olds. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking like, how am I gonna, like, what if I can't direct? A, like I had never worked with an 11 year old. Yeah. And he's like, no nah, bro, like these are serious. Well, like I still, I thought an 11 year old wasn't like, like you're not you don't even know football like, like not, you're, not you yet you're play. a kid yeah, right yeah and um he's like no bro trust me so <laughs> end up trusting him the guy the the kids show up 30 minutes early you know they're like sharp like yeah 11 year olds they come in incredible day man like these two kids like brilliant his one's ricardo one's giovanni tamayo and bro just incredible energy like we worked from probably 8 a.m it ended at the Galaxy game. Yeah. And we were able to take them, to, you know, to the lock. Like, oh, they you were just, the like, following them, meet, having yeah, them yeah. meet so players? Yeah, so, so the the first half of the day was, like, this lifestyle feeling thing where they're, like, they take the train. They're playing, like, kind of, like, ode to, like, not quite Joga Bonito, but so it feels mm. like, so it feels like culture and these kids are like on this crazy adventure in a big world by themselves 11 year olds like yeah. taking the subway and like playing soccer in the subway yeah. and like you know and then the whole thing was like we'll take you to the game at the end so that we ended up being leaving there probably at 10 p.m so this is a 14 hour day for like 11 year olds. 11 year olds bro not once did they complain not once did they sharp bro like workers yeah you know and uh how big was the crew the, uh, the crew was dope. So since that's kind of my background, yeah. I was able to get, you know, probably like 10 people or so. Okay. But they're yeah. like, once again, for that project, I'm like, people are like rocking because of our path. Not exactly. necessarily, you know, they're not, not like. paid too correct, much. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But they're, but you're like, you have a DP out there. You have people. Yeah, like, I have, I, it's guerrilla style, right? Yeah, you're moving. Yeah. And I have Brian Beckwith, uh, who's like the DP for all of my big shoots. Okay. Yeah. And it's just like, yo, bro, I need you one day. Come on. Like da 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 da. Yeah. I'll I'll give you an NFT. Like that <laughs> that's what he and he was down because at the time, you know, and, and on top of that, he just supports. Like, yeah. He's a love. he's a good friend. Yeah. For sure. But uh but yeah, so we make that video and it turns out that those two kids are part of the uh, academy called TFA and they're part of this very elite group of kids. Mm. So they naturally had all these eyes and there's this LA like hyper competitive parent culture 
mm. that then now sees they're like wait i want my kid to be in a film this and we start getting hit up so i'm literally teaching parents how to set up a crypto wallet and buy an nft to get bro an NFT. and these and, the, and these and, and i'm teaching them about web3 and like hey there's tools there's this there's that like you know and uh so we end up selling about 10 to 15 of them to these like this community of 11 12 year olds yeah so when that happens i'm like wow now we have like kids to help yeah right yeah. So, so then it's like that's where we started and and in my mind i'm like all right um this is gonna be like a 10 year project before anybody sees if this even works and in my mind i'm like you know it's cool like this will be dope right 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 it's something and to work towards exactly and then I'm blessed enough. My boy Sam, he brings me over to uh, BBFC. Shout out those guys. They do dope stuff in Venice. They mm. set up a Sunday game every weekend. Yeah. F do great stuff for the community. Yep. And uh, I go there and I'm just like, man, this energy is crazy. It's, it's vibe, sunset. It. Yep. It's like, and uh, ocean, palm ocean, trees, yeah, and, all that. Yep. Yeah. And I pull up with like some of my boys and we're running that, we're running the court maybe like eight games, right? Yo. And then And then these youngsters come in like high school age looking kids and they're cracks they're ballers. yeah ballers and Dude. uh that's mice that's uh, samim yeah and that's mecca who Yo. i don't know if you met mecca I haven't met but, mecca yet but those boys are the ones we play and it's like a tough game and they end up knocking us out mm -hmm. i'm like oh man and it gets like a little rough you know like yeah you like know it's like, yeah it's like a real <laughs> you know and uh and and in the past like 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 you know we're all competitive and stuff but for the first time it clicked in my head, I'm like, wait, you're you're building something so you have to represent in a certain way. Yeah. Cause you're around the people that you're supposed to, you know, this is your so, community, the, so then when it right? gets hot, I'm just like, oh yeah, I just, you know, I was just like, for the first time, let it go, sit back. And then at the end of that session, I go and I introduce myself to Samim and I'm like, hey, look, like follow me on this. Like I'm building this project to help literally kids like you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that happens a couple weeks go by and uh my boy sam uh technique trainer he's an amazing trainer he works in the orange county and stuff like also big supporter he bought an nft right off bat Yo. like he saw when he saw the project and uh he's like bro the shoe surgeon he's got this crazy facility like come play dude so he brings me to play and we're playing i meet yuri the guy that kind of runs the soccer league yep and uh you know, I go a couple weeks with no intentions of anything, just like I was trying to play personally. Yeah, you know? like, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then a couple weeks later, Yuri kind of, uh, we follow each other and he sees on Instagram Immortals Project or Immortals Football Club. Mm -hmm. So when I released the NFT project, it was called Immortals Football Club. Mm, right? Because okay. yeah. it was the, the little homies. It was the were, football. Yeah, yeah it was the, the footballers. The, yeah, right. the ballers, right? Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, yo, what is that? And I'm like, and he also sees like on my page that I work with a lot of like popular, like more influencer artists, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, it'd be dope if like we could run a team. And and he's like, all right, you could run a team, but like, like pepper in some of the influencer type people too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I do a little bit of that. Like I really just bring them the support, but I actually want to get like youth players in there yeah and 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 the, and the shoe surgeon what he built over there is dope so a young kid goes over there and sees that the first thing i'm telling him is like yo look like this guy started in like a room this size yeah yeah look what he built like and he built it off of ideas yeah you know and off of that be like yo look everywhere else this, these are all ballers that have their own careers in different ways like anything is possible type thing and yeah. just that off rip like i'm like oh this is gorgeous like i love i love that about it right now with that said some of the youngsters that we got you know we're, we're helping kids that like don't have the best situations so with that comes you know growth learning they need to learn they need to understand like how to act professional right. how to be around a setting like that yeah. yeah so i'm not gonna lie that season was like one of the biggest learning things for me because there were fights there were mm. there were situations there were kids and the whole time i'm like yo i'll pay nobody pays for anything but you guys got to do one discord one hour class on discord with me and the whole thing about that was like i just wanted in my mind when my life changed was when i understood that the power that i could have by planning and writing down what i want to achieve because mm. if it's just stuck in my mind 
and I don't put it down. Like the first time I learned that was before I moved out to LA and mm. I'm not gonna lie, like I was like, uh, I was a sophomore in college and the whole thing was like a five year plan. I was at the five year plan, right? And yeah. it was like, we were trying to work with musicians. So it was like, who was the, bi the biggest artist then was Lil Wayne, right? So mm. I write down Lil Wayne. Yeah. Three, we end up moving to LA like three months later and fast forward like a couple months, I end up, we end up connecting. And by the way, I move out here with my best friend from when I was five years old. Oh, wow. We played soccer, we met at the YMCA soccer league, right? We end up moving out here. He focuses on editing, I focus on directing and producing oh. and we, we, but we end up linking with G-Eazy mm. early, early. Like this is like 12 passenger van day, G-Eazy. Yeah. And he gets the opportunity to open up for Lil Wayne that summer and they bring us. So three months after I write that down, we're on tour with Lil Wayne. Bro, manifest. That's so crazy. And, and, and the, the craziest thing is like at that age, at younger ages, it's so easy for you to deeply believe in something. Yeah. yeah. Like you tell a 50 year old, hey, you could be an astronaut. You could be, they're going, what are you talking yeah. about? It's hard for them to like, and that's that's manifesting is like you actually have to believe deep yeah so Man. when i made them sign up for that discord all i wanted them to do is like all right you want to be pro at least research academies and sh and give me your top five academies and then i'll do outreach so through that we were able to like i'm able to get them to start to like write stuff down and figure out how and and, and research right so uh, from that first little class, we had a boy, Adu, Adrian, like they found some academies and what I did then is I did the outreach. So uh, Levitt, high, high, uh, Levitt High Performance Academy in Mexico, mm. uh, coached by uh, coached by Ramon Morales, who played in the national team and coached Chivas, played at Chivas, all kinds of dope stuff. They love the pro, like I end up getting a call with the guy that started that. And I get on the phone, this guy Enrique, super dope. And he's he's one of the first ones to be like, yo, I see I see what you're trying to build. Like, he gives me three scholarships. No way. For a semester. Yeah. So I'm able to send two boys over there. Uh, Adu, our, the goalie that came that week, yeah. and then Adrian. This is so, down to Mexico to play with. To in Mexico That's in Guadalajara, and then each weekend they're playing like Necax. They're playing all these dope professional teams. professional Mexican team. Yo. Yeah, but like youth, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then that. That's like kind of like <laughs> it's just ballooning, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, but this whole time I'm like, and obviously I'm not gonna lie, like the commitment to that one. Yeah, these kids didn't quite under. They were like, "What is this guy talking?" You know. But as like as they start to see how this stuff works in life, where like you could actually dictate your path. Yeah, like you could actually control and have vision. So yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. Say it again for the people yeah. in the back. Yeah, Legit. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. they slowly start to see it and they all change like you know and, and it's like if you saw those boys from last year to some meme now like or or mice now like it's it's unrecognizable because yeah. it's like the trials you know you have to go through stuff in life you can't just think like oh i'm gonna get that contract without any like scars on me For <laughs> you sure. know you have like, to go through things. yeah you have yeah. to understand you have to lose you have to not get them you have to you know yeah um so, yeah so Top of the year this year, um, I know like this summer I have to do it like proper because like, and it's now the incentive can't, can no longer be like, we're just gonna play in a league. This is like, if you're ready to commit, I'm gonna provide like, like programming, like I'm gonna provide the actual work you need to do for you to be successful at whatever. Yeah. But it's gonna be 6 a.m.s. Yeah. Yeah. So so right now we have 6 a.m. on Tuesday beach session. I'm able to get Coach Mentoa, this guy, um, honestly a legend, bro. Like the most inspiring. He's a, a track coach. Yeah. He's had like 40 record holders, like national record holders. Like his two kids are track phenoms. But now that I'm dealing with them, I I know why, and it's because like <laughs> he actually like he's like yo I'm gonna work with you until you see your greatness and then mm. when you see your greatness it's over it's a wrap it's over because okay. that's all you know so the way he motivates is crazy i so. think that was the i saw one video exactly. recently where he was just like yeah yeah that's yeah, him yeah we so don't he, lose we yeah, learn yeah 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 yeah. yeah. you, you know like, what i'm oh, saying yeah. you're like whoa yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah so sense. so we have that tuesday mornings then mm. bradley first strike soccer like top coach top like 
just like his understanding of how to like help kids develop their technical skills. Yeah. Incredible, especially one on one stuff, like where he has a kid one on one or like three kids, small group stuff, right? Yeah. He also is forward thinker. So he's like not only down to unite, but he also is down for a bigger picture instead of being like, Hey, I'm I need to get this rate yeah. every week. Give, for, give me ten grand. Or whatever. <laughs> or like or like no, that that I would understand that, but he's like if it was a coach that would be like, hey, I'm going to need 50 bucks a session. It's like, mm. dude, like, f- come on. Like, I can't do that right now, but yeah. 50 bucks? Like, yeah, exactly. Go, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. So um, he's, he's like, bro, I'm, I'm ready to go the distance with yeah. Bradley because he's good people. So Thursdays is Bradley and the way he treats it. It's, it's all about also like, I think the main thing of this is like, if I build an environment where kids feel safe to dream mm. and to have aspirations, then that beats their club team, that beats everything else that exists because when you go there, it's like you don't necessarily feel free to like be what, you almost feel like your teammates are kind of your competitors, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I'm trying to build that atmosphere where like everybody allows you to dream and have have visions, right? So um, then, we, then we do Friday is a 1v1 league, which I'm pumped about. It's called the Gauntlet. And mm. I think that's gonna go, that's gonna get big, big. I yeah, think, you know, yeah. Cause it's like, Everybody wants to see the one on ones. Every and, and, you know, and we we've done it like a practice is just practicing the setup, the rules, everything. Yeah, it's dope. It's yeah. dope. So then that one's just for fun. Like the kids are gonna love that. That was Friday, seven p.m. How long does that go? Like, uh, well, probably a couple hours. Couple hours. Yeah, and, and it's like it's like a, a line of kids, and you just go one v one. So look, the concept is dope. Yeah. So you show up. Uh huh. You get two poker chips. Okay. Right. When you play, if you lose, you give your poker chip to the winner. At the at the end of each session, we'll we'll tally, we'll keep track, we'll have a leaderboard. Whoever has the most chips at the end of the summer is gonna get something crazy. Yeah. Like like bet out like we have something dope Some for that. Serious. Yeah yeah we have something dope for <laughs> yeah. that. So yeah. Um. So yeah, just gamifying it. Yeah. You know like you know so that that element is gonna be dope and it's just first to score wins. Yeah. Um. And we're starting it in Downey, which is like outside of LA, but it's an area of LA that like has ballers bro and, and it needs it needs attention too so yeah. um i was able to connect with caleb um gold training he's dope like he works out of there yeah and once again he's also on the same mentality where it's like we're down to come together we're not trying to like like hey this, that, that's this my player ours. that's my player or, yeah. you know what i'm saying it's like yeah. no let's like if we all come together like we can actually do anything yeah you know yeah so I definitely was, I was very adamant about finding something in Downey because like that area has the the boys, the kids, like the ballers, you know, and there's not a lot of attention or community events there. So for sure. So then we have that. And then uh, Sundays, my boy Uri, Naturaleza Movement, what he does is he has the process where he helps athletes connect their mind to their muscles, to their breathing when they're stretching and trying to like rehabilitate. So that's another element that like these kids have never heard of, right? you know? Yeah. And it has to do too with like breathing, like breathing and it's like a very, very like low impact introduction to like meditation, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, that, and then Wednesday nights, we have our mastermind class, like what I did last year, turned yeah, yeah. into a mastermind class which is where we have like all of the students in this virtual classroom and all together and also individually, they will be able to figure out steps towards what they want. Like create goals, goal setting. Create goals, goals. And then on top of that, like, all right, my goal is to make that team, Mm -hmm. but now let's figure out the steps. Mm. So let's figure out like, so like I told you, hey, I want to be a pro player. Well, at least you have to get to an academy. So one step is like research, like right. like go on your computer and find programs. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever it is, like that's just an example, right? So yeah. so that's that's the Mortals Project is <laughs> is that summer. It's that educational component. Got it. Mortals Football Club is like kind of like that'll be the NFT project. Yeah. But also kind of like not necessarily the academy right just mm-hmm. like as we grow and i i love the immortals project just because it makes it like broader yeah it could like like you know it's like it could go it into could be art a, it could be right? correct like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like and, and, and like 
since the start of our project was so intertwined with art, mm -hmm. I think the future of it is forever merging the worlds. Yeah. Because like, if you're an athlete, another path of inspiration is art. For sure. And and a, a path of inspiration that doesn't feel like school. And it doesn't feel like, it feels like you can express. Yeah. And I think as humans, that's like, when you figure out a way to express yourself is a way to like, you know, like release. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're just like wound up and trying to play pro and you're like stuck in your head and it's gonna be tough for you to like, take pressure off of that yeah so if you find like just a couple other things you know so um the goal is bigger you know it's not really like obviously i i guarantee we will have some boys that go pro yeah for sure but at the same time like the goal is to help them understand how to be like a good human yeah and also how to have tools and how to have knowledge so that they can overcome things, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah so. That's, Doc, <laughs> that is so much. I, I need to rewind a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah. one, I, I'm gonna ask you about the NFTs, but before yeah. I even get to that, like, yeah. just the thought process of how this has grown. Again, you mm -hmm. said you kind of started pandemic. Yeah. So this has been like almost three years of yeah. now what For, seems yeah. like a, a huge profit project, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, as, as you're going, as you, Javi, are going yeah. through this thing, like, yeah. Are you, are you recognizing kind of the, the, are you seeing like the next step before it happens or are things yeah. just kind of coming and you're taking it like just as a business owner, like yeah. when people are reaching out to you, are you yeah. like, oh yeah, I had this in mind. Let's yeah. do this. Or is it kind of just forming? Yeah. So I guess from my, like I said, like when, whatever, 13 years ago was yeah. when I first did that goal thing. Yeah. Like I never stopped. I just kept developing the process of doing that. So now the way I break it down is like. I'll actually do like, all right, say you could do it for your whole, you could do it macro, so for your whole life, yeah. or you could do it micro for one project. So what I what I do is like, I'll just micro in on immortals, yeah. right? And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll list out the key elements. So it'll be like what, like education, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, yeah. you list the main components, right? Then right next to that, I'll put key partners. Mm. And right next to that, I'll put key players. The mm. difference between a key partner and a key player, a key player is somebody that's rocking with me, like that's like a gunner, a beta, like somebody that's like a player on my team. Yeah. A yeah. key partner is like, I want to work with Nike one or whatever. Yeah, like, you know? For sure. And then under that, you write next steps. And under that, you write tools that you want to use. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is as you write next steps, you also have a list of people you can reach out to and, par and partnerships and then you see elements and then you see tools. So now visually you could start to connect the dots. Connect dots. Yeah. And then at the bottom of that same exact page, I do a timeline. Yeah. So I'll put like just a just cuz I'm visually like you'll see it and when you start to like write things down on the timeline, you understand time different than like in your imagination thinking forward you yeah. see it you're like oh wow there's a big gap right here or like you see or you see like wow there's like i have all my stuff in these three right months in this month. like yeah. you know so then you can kind of start to like spread it a little bring bit. things down yeah. like eventually you know so so it's like scheduling too to a certain extent slightly you know? like, because yeah. because when you set a goal and you don't set a timeline it's like Bro, you know, <laughs> big fat. Yeah, you so, can have a goal all you want. Yeah, like, yeah. If you have no so timeline a, to achieve it. Like, yeah, exactly. And then you don't have any next steps to achieve it. You're not. You're also. It's gonna be. You're gonna be waiting. Or like, yeah. you're actually gonna create more stress for yourself because you're waiting for something to happen instead of knowing what you need to do. Yeah. Right. Bro. Yeah. This is a master class you're giving <laughs> me right now. Yo. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. then, like, you, you. Okay, so you had this skill set. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that a skill set, yeah. like an art. Where did the where did the kind of obviously you were talking about you always wanted to like give back to the yeah. community. Yeah. Where did like specifically giving back to kids come in? Yeah. You know, like how did that form into like the, we can really grow this a little bit? For sure. Well, when he told me what's your legacy, I started to think like, what do I care about? What do I love? What made me? That's what I thought, yeah. right? And I'm like, without the discipline I learned from soccer, mm. without the practice without understanding how much practice something takes to be great at. Like, yeah. just nothing, like, bro, I played 20 years of soccer and then <laughs> still need practice. <laughs> like, like, bro, like, you can't tell me I can't practice editing for five hours and become greater be than best. other people. You yeah. know what I mean? So, 100%. so it, it was it was really that, you know? Mm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, man, so it's just been kind of like, to me, it's like a big domino game. 
a lot of people get excited and just like push it. But like really it's like I learned this from Jeezy. I'm not gonna lie, like from that team because like I told you, when I started, it was a twelve passenger van and they were talking about like they had a vision that was crazy. They were like, in three years it's this, in five years it's easy season, sell out Oracle Arena, this, that. Massive vision, massive yeah. vision. Yeah. And and I'm like, on his team, I'm working for him, and I'm sitting there like, what are they talking about? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But then we show up every day to work, bro. I see every day, like, bro, not just G, but everybody working every day, yeah. every day. And then you start to see things like part. And then I start to realize, like, even if the person next to me doesn't believe in what I'm doing, it doesn't matter if yeah. I show up every day and put in the work. Mm. So then, you know, I learned that from them, you know, like understanding vision, understanding like steps. Yeah. Right. And then understanding that if you show up, it's it's an it's inevitable. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's really it's really you versus you kind of like they say, but right. like you versus you could be like your entire team that's creating something that's like a you mm -hmm. you know it's like unifying humans to to move in accordance yeah is like a bigger version of you versus you but what happens when multiple people unite into the same vision like we talked about manifesting right yeah bro the power of a group of people believing mm. in something is so crazy yes right yeah. so then i end up seeing all the things i said happen sells out Oracle Arena Fires, sells out Barclays Center two nights in a row. He does a platinum record, this, that, bro. Crazy. And you're just witnessing it like, okay, I got this is... Not even just witnessing, but like... Working like, in it. You're a part of it. Yeah, at that time, I'm a videographer, so I'm filming everything that happens. Yeah. Like, from the party at 4 a.m. that ended, the after party, then we're, le we're, we're getting on the bus, sleeping... We wake up at 9 a.m. at the next place, like, oh, get out of the bunk. And then you have about like 30, 40 minutes before you go to radio interviews for mm. four hours. Mm. Then we go get some grub, we get to the venue, and then he probably has like 30, 45 minutes before he has to do a 60 to 70 person meet and greet every day. That's crazy. Bro, the meet and greets are a grind. Really? Bro, because like- You're just sitting there, people are coming up. Bro, yeah. imagine meeting 70 people, like for him, yeah, exactly. For all of us, kind of, but like for him, bro. Yeah. Like, imagine meeting seventy people and then having to give them your energy, like, yeah. and then and then thinking like, bro, this may be the only time this person ever meets me. So if I do something wrong, like, they'll have the worst impression, right? It'll yeah, start forever. to create, yeah, yeah. So it's like, so then we do that. Then he has about an hour. Then the opener comes out. Then he starts to get ready for his set. This whole time filming everything, bro. Like, <laughs> like literal, literal, like eighteen hour days for like years. Yikes, man! You know, and then you know he plays a show. We go back to another after party. We get on the bus, wake up, right? Yeah. So it's just a Groundhog Day. Yeah. Groundhog Day every day, but then what I start to see is like, okay, they could just be doing Groundhog Day, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring things together. So now he put in so much work touring like what i'm telling you about it was like 400 person rooms then 600 person rooms mm. then thousand person rooms then an arena you know yeah. like eventually right <laughs> yeah so then uh what he's actually creating is he put in so much work that you fast forward three four years then he has yg opening for him he has mm. uh, he has two, uh too short he has e40 he has like massive artists opening for him yeah but why because he actually put in that groundwork and he's the only one that can sell tickets east of Colorado. Mm, he's got the fan base. Like he, legit, he like has the concert, that. like the real life, like kids will show up and pay a hard ticket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that doesn't come from anything besides like him showing up at that place four or five times before that and giving his all. Doing the meet and greets, doing the, the every whole morning. Thing. In the Groundhog Day you're talking about, it reminds me of what we were talking about just, just before off camera, like, like even social media posting. It's yeah. like you yeah. just find one pocket and do it consistently and yeah. do it because you're in inspired exactly. and like that can grow into now you got two things you're doing, exactly. three things and like you just grow. Literally, so, literally. Dude, yeah. Yeah, so then what they start doing is as they go to each city, they invite, since he has fans, mm -hmm. they start to invite whoever the biggest artist from that city is to come do one song with them. Mm. So now we're in Atlanta, Waka Flocka comes out. We're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're in New York and, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
man. Any like Papoose or no, I can't remember no, no. who was the top. Uh, dog. He just passed away. He's the most. Oh, Pop Smoke? DMX, DMX. Oh, DMX. Oh, Brother, damn. DMX. Bro. Damn. DMX. I'm thinking of like young. No, no. Or, DMX yeah. comes out. Yikes. Like, okay. You know, and um, and bro, that man was like so wise, mm. crazy. And yeah. and on top of that, like, you know, you're getting to see all of these like. They've Le- been through legends. things. They, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then imagine you go there and then it's like, dang, G brought out, you know, LA shows were nuts. Like, no, I can't believe And then, yeah. you know, so um, he starts, so I, I'm seeing it's like, all you do is you uh, you give your platform to showcase somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Other artists are like, no, it's my show, I earned it. It's like, no, like, let's showcase whoever the people love and then that's going to connect us. Yeah. yeah. So then that right there is another, another perfect example of, uniting and bringing things together is powerful yeah it's actually division is the least powerful thing it'll make you so weak yeah if you feel like you need to be isolated you'll be the weakest but if you're like even in my career man like a lot of people would focus on like oh what camera what, what equipment i was always focused on like what human can i work with mm, like mm-hmm. what human can i share energy with to like create something Crazy, nuts huh? yeah you know and then as you grow like everything trickles from the top so if i'm directing a project and i'm helping the gaffer carry some things like that man is working hard that day and if i'm like yo what's up like how's your life like you know and you're just a real human you care for every type of human yeah and you don't need people to make you feel special then the way that the thing comes together it's a whole nother thing i've been on sets where like directors show up you maybe like six hours after setup, yeah. and they're ju- they just here to call shots, and it's just like a different set. Yeah, than they when won't. Everybody's there, all love. Like yeah. everybody's working towards this one goal. Exactly. You know? exactly. Wow. Yeah. So, so then <clears throat> that in itself, like that, can translate to the sport. Yeah. And honestly, I learned that from soccer because it was like, unless you bring your team, like I was able to be captain in, in high school, and like the only reason I was that is because. I would bring things, I would bring people together. I would want people to like, like be build. together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like genuinely like be there for each other. Mm. You know? So um that's that's the skill set. Like it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. If you bring people together, you're gonna succeed. Yeah. Right? That's a ooh, yeah. message. <laughs> yeah, no, hundred percent. And I'll put that against anything. Like if you take the person that tries to divide everybody, yeah, and you take the person that's bringing people together, and they're both trying to be directors, this guy's gonna have a real hard time because in all industries, it get, the circles get smaller and smaller the higher up you get. Yeah. So it's like if you're that person that divided these people, you better believe like those people are probably homies with these people. Yeah. And they're you know, like, so don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't and mess it, with him. And, right. and even beyond that, he thinks he doesn't mess with you guys, but you guys are the ones that are the movement. You guys yeah. are the culture. You guys are whatever it is. And he's whatever, you know? So it's like, um, yeah, there's power. There's power in, in community and unity, you know? Yeah. So I talk a lot about community building and yeah. like maybe not. I mean, th- that's this podcast is kind of de- dedicated yeah. to that, right? Like yeah. soccer in a way is the biggest community yeah. on the planet. Yeah. And it you know, I've been to many countries. I can't go anywhere and and feel out of place if I, if I mention a soccer player. Like that's an immediate connection, <laughs> yeah. right? So like there's a lot of that here. I I agree with you that like there are there are a lot of people in this industry in this maybe even in this town yeah. who are very separatist in a way yeah. and it's just kind of oh no, we're doing we're doing this. We're yeah. social media this or yeah. we're, you know, that. Um so it's and especially like with G Easy, like yeah. it's inspiring to see that, yeah. that like there's artists, there's yeah. people yeah. who are more interested in building. That's I mean, shoot, that's what this is all about. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, well, take it back a little bit yeah. too. Like, you grew up in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even know how the ball is out out in Indiana. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, yeah. And, and and the community. Were you in yeah. like? Did you grow up in a Latino community? <laughs> nah, that nah. I don't, that doesn't really exist. Exists in Indiana, in Indiana yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm like. yeah, yeah. So so like yeah. So yeah. I moved to Indiana. I'm five years old. Uh, probably like two Hispanic kids, maybe a couple Asian kids, maybe yep. like four black kids in my. You know, like almost even in high school. Like, yeah, you know, no, like out of probably um, hundreds, and, hundreds. And, of, yeah. But honestly, like that's what allowed me to never fit into a comfort zone. Mm. Because I was always an outcast. So, so like, all right, so my locker was right here. The biggest redneck racist fool ever was next to me. That's my boy, bro. He actually, he actually, he actually would, he actually would put people like he would step in for me. Mm. And that was only because like 
he had never met someone like me. Mm. He had never met someone that looked like me, was like me. And yeah. then he met somebody that was respectful, that was, you know, like always genuine. Yeah. He's like, oh, no, what? Like, like oh, hum- no, you're human, cool. humans like- connect in a different way, right? Like, we may think this is that. And obviously, like, dope ass dude. Yeah. But obviously, like, his surroundings and where he grew up, it's a certain lifestyle. It's a certain, you know, 100%. the country is the country. People are so isolated. Yeah. Once again, that's, that's another very scary thing of isolating yourself because because mm. you're not going to understand that there's a lot of other beautiful things out there yeah and then you'll just close yourself off but like i said like indiana the sport itself so here's another inspiration for the summer project is i play you know we play in a cool team freshman year i'm not gonna lie i gained some weight i was whatever i wasn't you know <laughs> it wasn't and my year it but. wasn't my but <laughs> I end up not even making JV. They put me on freshman team, mm. and all of my homies are on JV. Like we were, we were an elite team at the time, you yeah. know. So that was just like, initially it was like I, made, you know, younger, so I'm making excuses like, oh, this, that, that summer comes around, and I was just like, oh no, this isn't gonna, you know. And I just work my butt off. I'm at the YMCA every day, like running, like working out the whole thing. Yeah come back sophomore year and I end up becoming captain sophomore year. Yo. Varsity. Yo. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One summer of work. One like, summer. Yeah. One summer. Yeah. So that's why I know like if I'm able to give this to other kids while all their homies are at home sleeping in until 10, then they wake up, they play video games, yeah. then they maybe they go to their team training. Yeah. These kids that are every day, 6 a.m., this, that, bro, when they come back to school, they're gonna be a different beast than the kid that's chilling. Hundred percent. You know. Yeah. So, I know the product is gonna work because it changed my life. <laughs> like yes. you know, like like and that and I didn't even have people to like push me. I was just like I was ready to change. Yeah. You know, that's another thing I really learned through those GEZ days is like self awareness. Mm. You gotta know. You gotta understand what you're putting out and what you're doing. So if you're complaining like, oh, this isn't working then you better become self-aware enough to understand why mm. and what you're doing. Because everything that, that happens in life is really a chain reaction off of what you're doing, you know? So uh, G was always really great at that. He always spoke of self-awareness. But at the time, um, you know, I, I was, you know, I was balling, but I always thought like, Oh yeah, they don't understand my game in mm. in Indiana because like yeah. they wanted that long ball, the really athletic, strong, like the American the American style from from two thousands. Like it's you know it's it's evol- forever evolving, but that was my personal like make myself feel better. Like oh yeah, they I just play a different game. They don't understand, yeah, they but don't really understand. it's like I could have at that moment understood it deeper and been like. If I learn their aspect of the game, I'm gonna be both things. Right. You know I what cannot, I'm saying? Instead yeah. of just being like, oh no, the coach doesn't get my style or whatever. I, yeah. Either way, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So it's um, it's almost putting the responsibility on you as yeah. opposed to like yeah. I mean that's I that's kind of that the the life I grew up in. Like yeah. you can't make excuses because that's not gonna help you, right? So if if there's anybody that you can change, mm-hmm. change yourself or your own outlook. I, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And and that's that's really the first step to like improving at anything because if you have if you're if something's going off and you always go external yeah then you're gonna keep feeling like things are happening to you instead of you're happening yeah you yeah, know exactly so that's yeah i mean that's you, a tough you loop. having that from the jump is like you know yeah. and, and that's that's like a true way to not succeed yeah it's to just always be like oh no it was their fault or oh like my situation's you know, or like, oh, the coach doesn't like me. Or, if I was taller, or, yeah, or if whatever, I was yeah. if I was a white guy, yeah. You but know, it's like, whatever. yo, dude, like, Pelé didn't have shoes. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what do you like? <laughs> he was you, juggling oranges. Yeah, yeah I don't know if he yeah, had a ball. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, and that's just one example. Like, yeah. the, the examples of like the worst situation succeeding is like everywhere in For every sure. field, like from hip hop to every everything, like yeah, sports, music, media, like, music, like even like Quincy Jones, right? Like, I just finished his book. Like, bro, such a brilliant man, but like his initial upcoming was like during the toughest years of racial like mm. inequality. Mm. And somebody that talented at jazz, he had to find a way to like be able to to like 
imagine that like they couldn't even stay at hotels like they couldn't even like go to whatever restaurants yeah they they would have to sleep in the in their car he says sometimes you know and it's like but they were still doing it right they were still grinding grinding so it's like so it's like that overcoming something like that and me sitting here like oh the coach doesn't like me i'm it's like what are you talking about yeah, <laughs> like that's like, a big perspective shift e- yeah. you know it's like yeah it's like bro like maybe if the coach wouldn't even let you step on the field or whatever you exactly. know what i'm saying like yeah like then maybe like if you could only play in certain neighborhoods or whatever you know like but you know yeah that's that's really it it's, it's like, almost no excuses like there's just yeah, if, yeah personally because at the end of the day like if you overcome an excuse and you take accountability, then you have a you have a chance at fixing it. Yeah, yeah. But if you're just like, oh, that happened, like, you have no chance at ever, you know, tapping in on that. So for sure. But yeah, dude, I love that. Like, that's a I, it, this is powerful. And honestly, like, not just powerful for your people, your programming, and but just in general. And mm-hmm. I, and I'm gonna be real, like <laughs> me too, right yeah. now, like yeah, yeah. in my life, like I, I'm caught in constant and I'm, and I'm sure people our age people in different age groups are just caught in this like wave of of almost existentialism like what am i doing where yeah. what should i be doing yeah you know like am i doing enough mm-hmm. like those kind of things and just almost to reduce it back to I, I had like an epiphany maybe a couple of weeks ago um and it was almost like a bleak epiphany i was i was kind of like you know like nothing matters right like mm-hmm. nothing really matters in in this world we're on a rock kind of mm-hmm. floating around <laughs> yeah. in, in abyss right um which helped me a little bit get outside of my head because mm-hmm. it just de-stresses everything like yeah. i need to do all this work yeah i do that's cool but it doesn't matter yeah but there's like another side to nothing mattering to everything you're seeing around you to the, the mics we're talking through the hat yeah. you're wearing whatever is possible because it mattered to someone course you know what i mean yeah so in and f- from that it just makes me feel like it doesn't matter what you're doing how much you're doing whatever mm. as long as it matters to you yeah you know what i mean like Big that's time. it <laughs> like that's yeah. all it has to do and so then to kind of maybe add that layer of exactly what you're talking about mm. on top of it like yeah. now that it matters to you figure out how what your goals are yeah. and, and then figure out what steps you have to take exactly. to your goals i mean that is like literally yeah. the way and it's like it's it's already like it's almost giving me goosebumps dog because it's like <laughs> yeah, making yeah. me feel like Oh, like yeah. the weight of the world is not so heavy. Yeah, you know, you just find something yeah. and just go with it. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a really good message. Yeah, you know? and and something uh, to think about too is like a lot of this pressure that we put on ourselves is is external. It's mm. based on it's based on your perception of what people expect from you. Yeah, right. So if you're mm. able if you're able to separate and only really dive into what you expect from yourself. Mm. right and there's something tricky too because like when you get into you you get into your ego so if you you like i ask you who you are right yeah you're gonna tell me like certain things that you know that like, i think are the best part about me right correct. i'm an yeah, athlete yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm this and i'm gregarious but or at whatever. the end of the day dude all you are is present right now mm. right here mm. right yeah so then it's like all these other things that might especially the ones that come from exterior things like you know like what I'm how saying? How people view you, how Correct. yeah, so so just don't matter. So finding a way to like listen, like that's been my year this year. Like mm. I'm trying to depict, like I'm not gonna lie, like I was honest with myself, self awareness again. It's like I just chased 12 years in this music industry based on what I thought was really cool, and like mm. a lot of exterior voices telling me like what pocket what, you know what i'm saying yeah, like like yeah how to position myself to be a certain type of whatever right yeah and uh and allowing myself to actually be like wait what comes from me right is how this entire project is actually feeling like no pressure on me mm. it's because like at the end of the day it's gonna be what it's gonna be because it's actually coming from yeah from it's, it's from your, your not, heart. not even not even me but it's like that's what I've always understood in creation is like we're vessels, so the the inspiration comes through me if I'm if I'm open to it, mm. right? So every time people be like, "Oh, I'm having writer's block, this and that," it's like you have too much ego. And the reason I'm telling you that is because you're the chef, you're not the soil that grew the vegetable. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? This man is dropping <laughs> like. You know what yo, I'm saying though? No, for sure. So we'll like, be sitting this there. This is not about you. We'll right? be sitting here <laughs> thinking like, yo, I'm the soil. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure to that because we can't grow a vegetable out of like out of nothing. But right? if you give me, you tell me like five things that you're trying five in- ingredients, and I allow myself to be inspired in the moment. I'll be able to give you solutions. Like that's part of the creative flow that I have mm. with artists. It's like I'm not there to tell you like what I think your best creative thing is. I'm gonna listen to you and I'm gonna allow whatever comes out to come out based on what you're telling me about your life, your vision, what you want to accomplish. Yeah. And and that's how this came to fruition too, is because like I really fell into a pocket where I could help artists develop their vision and what they're you know, and it's I the first thing I tell people is like all right, making it. What's making it to you? So, like, uh, what's making it to you? Like, in the biggest thing. Yeah. I, for me, making it is <laughs> tra- traveling the world, talking about the sport I love, I guess, is making it, right? There it is. Boom. All right, so now you're there. Yeah. You accomplished it. You're traveling around the world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're doing that every day. How do you How do you go about your day-to-day? What do you do? Do you have you have a charity? Do you have a brand? Do you have mm. do you do you have you know start start finding what you do there and then from that point, once you figure out a little bit about like when you're in that moment, right? Mm-hmm. Like who like what kind of things? How how would you move different? Yeah, because it's you're no longer here. That same pre- yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you already pushing your mentality to that level. Right, and then you figure out, okay, cool. Like I would have a charity that gave back to, w- would build wells, right? Yeah. Like, or, or or I want a I want a brand bigger than Nike, whatever yeah, it is, right? Yeah. Like it could be wholesome or or whatever, right? At that point, then it's like, okay, ten x that. Mm. So, th- what's ten times that vision? Yeah, I can't even think about it. It's almost like daunting to to. Yeah, but yeah, but look. So if you're gonna do anything in life, yeah, it's gonna take at least ten times more work than you think it's gonna for take. For sure. Yes. So if you're gonna already have to do ten times more work, why not allow your mind to get you ten times the vision? Mm. Mm. Push even further than what you thought was possible. So when you would cause bro, I'm telling you, I guarantee you, if you truly believe You'll be traveling like by the end of this year yeah. doing this podcast and building schools then yeah and then you know what yeah, i mean but like ex- I, exactly it's like but, i want to yeah because because if you will get there yeah like you you were probably like i want to have my own room to do this podcast yeah i want to have a studio that was the here, next that's the next yeah vision. but but if you already had <laughs> yeah I, you just you just true. came up with it you just came up with it right now when i asked you yeah yeah. So if you already had, okay, well, I'm going to, next thing is I'm going to be traveling around. And then the next thing I'm going to have a charity that builds schools. And then the next thing is then you attach it to purpose. So then you can forever have motivation to continue. Hmm. Like, like if I would have just been like, I want to sell out an NFT project. Like there Did would, that. there now would be, no there purpose. would be no, but I'm like, I want to build like, you know, like yeah. I, I, I can grow from it. Grow and, and, and like that only comes from having other people inspire me in that sense where it's like no bro like your mentality is everything like whatever you think is possible like go further yeah like yeah. go deeper bro like go like you know cuz it's like you have <laughs> yeah. time and then in in that sense too it's like if if you're like if you're not going after this you're actually going after the schools mhm then this is gonna be more, more, more Accessible, simple. Right. Yeah, you're like, dude, this is just a couple steps on the way to like what I really want, and then you're gonna feel less pressure about like mm. right now, you know? It's that like shoot for the moon, you know, land in the stars kind of. Yeah, kind of thing, or right? go to Saturn. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Like, like, you know, I want to like, go to Saturn. Oh shit, I landed cause, on the moon. Because oh. that, because that's the thing. It's like, what if it works out better than you expected? Yeah. It usually does. Yeah. If you if you truly allow it to become what like, bro, if if this project would have became what I truly thought, and I didn't allow it to be what it's supposed to be, I wouldn't have had some meme. I wouldn't have had those. You know what I'm yeah. saying? As thing as life, I'm I'm sitting here like, I want to help. I want to do this. I want to do that. Life is gonna naturally bring the humans. Yes, Natu- the energy naturally. Yeah, bring, and, and blessings don't come from like if you want whatever. It's not gonna come like in a package from Amazon at the front door. <laughs> You're gonna like run into a stranger and they're gonna say two things that like Yes. It's gonna be from humans. Yeah. That's like 
we're all like that's we're all vessels. or nature or yeah you know what i mean things yeah. things with energies like us bro I, you know bro i you you are speaking <laughs> my language i know like yeah. even when i speak this way some people are kind of like you know like they step back but like yeah. this is a hundred percent where yeah. i'm at like yeah, yeah. a lot of my life and that's why i guess it's i'm having a tough a tough time in this stage of my life because i didn't think about things yeah. before this yeah. and i remember i grew up i have four sisters my oldest uh sister says I live a charmed life. I was the baby, mm -hmm. you know, like, so they had all the pressure to yeah. do things, to yeah. get A's, yeah, to yeah. go to certain colleges, to yeah. do whatever. And I was just like, almost just feeding off of whatever they were accomplishing, yeah. right? Like, oh man, like my brother's on a club soccer team. Yeah. I want to be on a club soccer team. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Oh, I want to go to this college. Yeah. And like, literally it's, it, it's, things have just grown. So yeah. I'm with you in that, like yeah. these things in life just come to you yeah. if you just are willing to accept it and yeah. you have the right energy yeah. and then but then i think even myself i've gotten to a stage where i'm like now what right yeah. or maybe it's like i have more pressure on me to achieve things now yeah. right like it's yeah. me aware of my achievements and yeah. going man i've done all this now yeah. what should i be doing yeah, yeah but now but that's now bringing like and i think that's the ego you're talking about yeah. that's bringing pressure like yeah. i'm supposed to be doing yeah. more than what i'm yeah. doing yeah you know? and, and on top of that you're taking yourself out of the moment because mm. you're thinking about what you did and what you're trying to do mm. so then it's really like you're gonna get anxious. Yeah. Like there's actually no way to think about both without that happening. Without being, yeah. But if you're like, if you somehow find a way to be like, what can I do now? Mm. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, and, and like, um, I mean, something you said just reminded me of The Alchemist. You ever read The Alchemist? No. That's I, I do need to Classic. read that book. Or just yeah. listen to it because the way it's written is so poetic. Like it's just an easy listen. It's like four or five hours long. Yeah. But. What, what that book is like, and it's obviously a fiction, but it's like kind of told in like fables, like kind of like the, it sounds kind of like the Bible-esque where it's like metaphors and, you know, mm -hmm. but the alchemist, it's like basically what an alchemist is, is somebody that could turn uh, like lead into gold mm. in the lab, right? Like at the thing. But as the book goes on, you find out that an alchemist is somebody that could do that with energy, turn mm. bad energy into good. Yeah. And the whole thing that it says is like, if you follow your your personal legend which is your personal destiny what you like that's why if you quiet the voices and you figure out what you want if you follow that the universe will conspire for you that's the mm. whole thing of the alchemist yeah. like yeah. like what i'm saying like people will come in your life events but that's only if you're actually like willing go to deep accept. enough to find what you want instead of what mm. you know what i'm saying yeah and then and then fast forward then this whole time, this guy, the alchemist, I'm just gonna tell you like a brief yeah, thing. Yeah, give me the little. He's, 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 chase, he's chasing after a treasure, right? That he is so far away, right? So this whole journey takes him through all this crazy stuff to try to get to the treasure. But what he ends up getting is like, meets all the, he meets a king, he meets a, a glass, he meets all these different types of people until he finally meets the alchemist at the end. Mm -hmm. And he, that's where he finds out it's actually about energy, not in a lab about gold, mm. you know? And mm -hmm. at the very end, he comes to find out that the treasure wasn't even far away, it was back where, at home. Yo, you but know, he had to go on the journey to, in order to get to, to, to actually even recognize learn, the treasure, right? To recognize that it was actually right under his feet where yeah. he started, wow. right? So then that in itself is like part of it. You know, yeah. it's like it's like you're gonna have to feel lost and you're gonna have to feel uncomfortable and talk to people you've never talked to to then hopefully figure out what, bro. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But the bro, that's not me, that's the alchemist. That's the alchemist. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I've heard so like, many people. Brilliant, bro. I, like, I read Will Smith's book, he said that's his favorite book. I've yeah. heard so many yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, big people yeah, yeah, say, yeah. like yeah. that book changes. Yeah. Changes your perception of life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Alchemist is on the list ASAP. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, like yeah. A, a weekend read. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, we, I, I, yo, bro. First of all, we got to get out of here. I'm gonna have to bring you back because yeah, yeah. I love this shit. I'll like, bring. I'll bring the boys too. That'd yes. Be dope. Bring. I, bring whoever through. Yeah, like, I like just some wanna, of the players so they could talk about their stories, their stories, what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. And like, and just how. how how you're finding them? Are are you picking these people, or are they just kind of coming to you? It's the same kind of energy. It's just coming. Yeah, that's nuts. Like everything I'm thinking, where it's like you I have to be so. I haven't forced a single thing, man. That is beautiful. That's yes, it. Don't force thing. it. Just like go like, and believe. Like do it. Believe. And just let it happen. Like That's wait it. for it. And if it's not there, you have maybe maybe your challenge right now is to be patient. Yeah. So once you become patient, then you broke one thing, bro. Life, like you could tell me, 
you're a patient person, but once again, now you're telling me about what you've done in the past. Mm. It's always like you have to become you patient right in the moment. Yeah. Or you have to be courageous in the moment or you have to be, you know, mm. so so then it, that that in itself is like. Bro, like, it, like this is a ma like legit a master class. I'm like, where are you learning this stuff? Like, yo, and and it's good. It's like it's a life to live by. Yeah. Do, let me ask you this: yeah. Do you ever, like, this stuff is coming out of you just so beautifully, yeah. almost poetically? <laughs> do you ever just kind of like get caught up on your own words and have to like go back and like recenter yourself? I'll tell you this: I'm I'm happy you asked that because like, for years, right? Like, I've always had conversations with people. Just like this, and yeah. like w w me and the person will expand from the conversation. Like we'll we'll grow. Like, but what I've noticed that's crazy is like my like people will tell me like, "Yo, I still remember that one thing, that conversation, whatever." Right? Yeah. And what I connected recently is I saw a homie that told me that he's like, "Bro, I didn't forget." And then I remembered when I told him that. And what I had told him was the thing that I needed to hear the most at the moment, but I didn't share that t with him. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like something about allowing yourself, once again, we're vessels. So what's coming out right now, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or in the moment. Being spoken through. Yeah. yeah, because it's like I'm only speaking because you're inspiring through what what we're this bouncing back, right? Yeah. So when I was talking to homie, he told me something personal that was his thing and what I gave him back, I connected later was actually what I was going through and I actually vesseled through, but sometimes when you do good to others, you're actually like, you're actually like telling yourself too, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And there's something powerful about that where actually allowing yourself to, one, sometimes it's uncomfortable cause like sometimes I'll say, I'm honest, like, I smell bullshit, like, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's right. like, like, you know, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, it's like allowing yourself to not fear what you say yeah. is the only way it flows like that, you mm. know? Um, mm. And obviously I've definitely said wrong stuff or stuff, you know what I mean? Stuff like, you maybe think yeah, about. Yeah, like, or, uh, yeah. or like, or I, or I haven't been able to articulate what I feel because mm. that happens to oh, all yeah. of us, you yeah. know? Yeah, 100%. Um, but I'm like spiritual. I'm like no, for you know sure. What I'm well, and I, that's so, one thing. I'm surprised you yeah. hadn't brought up maybe like religion or anything because yeah. the way you're speaking, yeah, feel like even the vessel yeah, thought yeah, process. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I grew up. I grew up Christian. Yeah. Um, and obviously, like you know, it's it's beautiful because one thing it teaches you is uh, is is to serve, right? It's mm. to serve, service. Yeah. Like that's the whole point. Like that's a big thing in in Christianity, right? The 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 thing though that gets tricky is like when people try to not necessarily weaponize it, but like Create have rules. you have you on a side or another, right? Yeah. Instead of like, so to me, like the Bible, like all, all like all religions really, they, they, there's a lot of similarities. It's like good versus evil, this, like, you know what I'm saying? So the actual stories in the book, sometimes people get so caught up on the detail, mm. but really it's like meant to inspire and meet you where you are. It's yes. not really supposed to be like, it's not like a dictionary. Here's a list of a what dictionary. you should do. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. It's, it's literally like you could read this, and if you're going through whatever, like it might speak to you. Yeah. You know, and and like fast forward, like obviously, like my parents, right? Like we immigrated. English is their second language. Mm. Very, they're very broken English. Like yeah. even to this day, like I only speak in Spanish with my parents. Mm. Um, but um, obviously, there was a big disconnect from them going to uh, English Christian church because yeah. they didn't quite understand, right? So as they evolved, they actually grew in their spirituality outside of the building. Yeah, yeah. Like my pops reads a book every night. My mom, you know, it's like, every, anytime it's like, I say something, you know, they'll be like, God willing, I'll see you. Or like, they're not they're not just saying like, oh yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. They're like, if God will, if it's yeah. God's yeah, will, if right? You know what I'm saying? So, what, I, wow. so I always grew up with that, right? But, yeah. but I was able to see them separate from the actual building. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think like if you're able to do that, separate it from like the building or like whatever is perceived. The, the politic around it. Exactly. Yeah, and absolutely. you're and you actually read it in a way where you're like, once again, see what it what it says to you. Mm -hmm. Screw everybody else. Like yeah. not to be selfish, but like at the end of the day it's like personal journeys, you know? Yeah. So it's yeah. like I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna try to get inspiration out of it. Or whatever. That's just 
once again, if you allow yourself to become inspired, it'll come through you. Yeah. But if you're like, oh, no, I'm not creative. Oh, no, I, I don't get inspired. Oh, you know what I mean? It's going to be much tougher. It's all mental. So I think I think that in itself definitely catered to me. And, and on top of that, like praying, right? Like mm. the, the concept of God, right, is like in your mind, you're speaking to the highest form, most like morally most correct. superior yeah, yeah yeah the thing right yeah so having that inside of your mind that you're talking to all the time is speaking to your higher self like what if you were gonna be a god like you because everybody's perspective is so different so that's why it's important too it's because if you at least develop that talking to something that's like much more holier and greater than what the world holds yeah you're gonna hold yourself to a different caliber of like living mm. if, you, if you're just sitting here talking to like whatever the most utmost highest being in your yeah in your imagination then yeah then you're then you're making steps towards greatness wow you know yeah so i mean that that in itself like once again i was able to separate too because i'm over here in indiana like a little thing that doesn't exist or like I never fit into like a <laughs> yeah you I know mean, yeah and that and once again that's like maybe the thing that was the most uncomfortable to me was actually the thing that was creating me in a different way than other people yeah right so its own alchemy right y- like yeah. just molding you into yeah well I had no other choice than to turn what I had into something <laughs> like yeah exactly you know, like, like, yeah or you know what's the point like right. and, and and I thankfully like I give all the credit to like my parents too because obviously like i didn't have some things but i had like i know unconditional love for sure for sure and and that in itself is like i think like as a human not understanding what that really means is tough and there's a lot of people that don't get that you know yeah and uh and yeah so i mean i I wouldn't trade anything like, 100%. <laughs> you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. And hopefully through the immortals project, that's what you're, that's also what you're giving. I mean, you're giving yeah. so much <laughs> knowledge and, yeah. and, and fitness and training and whatever, yeah. but like just the understanding that like yeah. there's people out there who yeah. understand love, understand yeah. service and growth. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that yeah. stuff is important yeah. and not everybody does. No, yeah. Bro, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> you coming through, bro. Come you on, have man. no idea. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's a little sweaty. <laughs> no, bro. it's sweaty. It's hot in the studio. That's yeah, how we yeah, do yeah. it. Yo, Javi Soto from the immortals project where where can people find you to find out more about everything um, you're doing so immortals football club yeah uh, on instagram ig immortals yeah. football club uh the immortals project.org is our website yo and okay. then uh my personal page is good boy shady good that's, boy shady that, i don't even know that yeah, one yeah. We t- that's like my director stuff and then um yeah yeah i gotta link with you on that stuff too because yeah, yeah, this yeah. is that yeah, i didn't even know yeah, you were yeah, really in either, that world either, but yeah. we definitely got a link on yeah. that Yes, good boy Shady. It's Javi in the, in the Immortals Project. Yep. Uh, NFTs. Where do I? I we're yeah. gonna have to do like a whole different show on that. Yeah, yeah. But like, what do you even do to find those? Uh, they're those on things? OpenSea. Okay. And what ended up happening is like, so the vision for that is um, there's only a hundred, right? Yeah. So as I build this side of it, mm-hmm. right, where there's now value, there's this course, this Behind academy, it. right? Right. Yeah. Um, the vision is. If you own an NFT, you have a lifetime membership to everything, right? Wow. So instead of this kid paying $2,000 for the summer, Mm -hmm. they could buy one of the NFTs for $3,000 and then have it for life. Yeah. Or whatever it is, right? And then that's when the homies that supported it first, they bought them for $700. Yeah. Hopefully they get a kickback. But at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you know, and... uh, All comes around. Yeah. And then the, the, the other thing is like, all the kids that graduate uh, from the summer, they'll. I'm gonna give them one. I'm gonna. That's gonna be their diploma, Yo. so that then they can too have. If our project blows, like they can have that lifetime, right. and, and then they can Not like what, that. admit or they their kids in. Yeah, or oh, they that they could get their too. kids, or they could have something of value instead of a piece of paper diploma. It's 100%. like hundred percent, you know, because <laughs> <Bro, laughs> yeah. don't even get me started on that. Yeah, like yeah. education system, yeah, yeah, like yeah. thanks, I have a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which somebody could say, I don't care about that, yeah, right? Exactly. Versus actually having something of a value. Yeah, you know or, or I mean? something like imagine if each kid when they graduated college would have a token for somebody else's tuition that they could flip to them yeah. later. Or whatever, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Then you actually equip your student to have some value from yeah. assisting Something your thing, right? Value. Yeah. But Damn, either, e- right either way, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm just, all I'm trying to do is to create something where I use the sport 
to get kids to buy in to like eating their vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know what I'm saying? Like, like write stuff Ronaldo down. Ronaldo eats broccoli, bro. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like write stuff down, like work that left side of your brain a little bit to like do the things that you don't actually want to do that you think are boring. Yeah. If you can somehow get the sport to make them do that, then what they're actually learning is something that they'll be able to use for life, you know? Mm. And, uh, that's that's really that's really you know the goal yeah in a lot of ways yo that's powerful bro yeah. yes check us out <laughs> hey appreciate you listening if you're listening in please make sure you press that subscribe button let's go uh, and and you know get notifications anytime anytime we have somebody as wise as Javi in this <laughs> in this studio bro we're here let's go uh, appreciate you listening in it's the EPB podcast we will catch you guys on the next one let's go thank you bro my dog yo. <laughs>